Good morning. I'm going to present my paper on ultrasonography and CT evaluation of neck masses. Neck masses are any swellings or enlargements of the structures in the area between the inferior border of mandible and clavicle. Despite our vast array of etiologies, the common neck masses are congenital lesions in lymphadenopathy and neoplasias, both benign and malignant. Role of ultrasound, ultrasound in evaluation of neck region is becoming increasingly important due to availability of high frequency probes and color doppler. Computed tomography is often the first diagnostic imaging examination performed in patients in whom the presence of head or neck mass is either evident or suspected. The aim of the current study is to evaluate the role of high-resolution ultrasonography and CT imaging in evaluation of neck muscles. The objectives of the current study is to study the mass lesion under the following headings, that is location, size, and extent of the mass, relation to surrounding structures, internal characteristics of the mass, and whether the mass is benign or malignant. The study was carried out at Department of Radio Diagnosis, Muzaffar Nagar Medical College and Hospital, and 20 patients presenting with neck masses, and they were subjected to USG and CT evaluation. Inclusion criteria consisted of patients who had presented with a clinically palpable neck mass and patients across all age groups. Exclusion criteria included post-operative patients, patients with contraindications to IV administration of contrast medium, pregnant females, and patients lost to follow-up. Ethical approval was obtained for the study from the Ethical Committee of the Institute, and written informed consent was taken from the parents or guardians. All patients were subjected to ultrasonography and MDCT scans. The patient was informed about the radiation exposure in the examination. CT examination was done on Siemens Omonto Scope 16 Slice Machine, and USD examination was done on Samsung USS H60 and F3L oblique one in machine. The cytopathological or histopathological examination reports of all patients were collected from the pathology department and were used as gold standard to compare with USD diagnosis and multi-detector CT. Data was entered in Microsoft Excel 2010 and statistical analysis was done using IBM SPSSV24 software. This is USG image of 65 years old female who had biopsy proven carcinoma of soft palate showing a large ill-defined tabulated lesion in the left carotid space, likely a lymph nodal mass. The same patient underwent CT and on CT we can see a large ill-defined tabulated lesion medially displacing the left common carotid artery and encasing it. Anteriorly, it is displacing the left lobe of thyroid with partial loss of fat planes. There is also focal loss of fat planes with the esophagus. Anterolaterally, it is displacing the sternocleidomastoid muscle with loss of fat planes. Posteriorly, it is abutting the paravertebral muscles with loss of fat planes. So we can see on CT, the proper extent of the mass in relation to surrounding structures can be observed as compared to the ultrasonography examination. The results, characteristics of the study population are as follows. Uh, out of 20 patients, 9 had nodal masses and 11 had non-nodal masses, out of which thyroid masses are the most prevalent. Then the comparison of the diagnostic efficacy of USG and CT was done in relation to histopathological examination in which UHSG had a sensitivity of 92% with specificity of 74.5, true predictive value of 81.5, negative predictive value of 90.4, and diagnostic efficacy of 84.7. CT had a sensitivity of 97.2% with specificity of 82.3, true predictive value of 88.5, negative predictive value 95, and diagnostic efficacy of 90.9%. The final diagnosis was confirmed by histopathology or FNAC, and the known nodal masses accounted for 55% of total neck masses and nodal masses accounted for 45% of the total neck masses. This was in accordance with the study done by AJK Cotton et al, where nodal masses comprised 38% of the total cases. That is 19 out of 50 with aerodigestive malignancies being the most common cause of nodal mass of neck. And in contradiction to study done by Vijay Pratap et al, where inflammatory masses were the most common cause of nodal masses. Similar results were obtained by study done by AJK Gautam et al, where since two percent of the cases and John Radev Sahu et al, where 73% of the cases were non-nodal masses.
In the present study, US, we had a sensitivity of 92.8%, specificity of 72.5%, and diagnostic efficacy of 84.7%. Almost similar results were obtained by Akriti Rastogi et al. in a study of 100 cases in which they concluded that ULG had a sensitivity of 87%, specificity of 96.6%, and diagnostic efficacy of 90.2%. Sensitivity, specificity, positive predictive value, and negative predictive value of our study were high. However, Less than the previous study, this may be due to low comparative sample size and variability in duration of lesion when USU was done as compared to the previous study. In the present study, CT had a sensitivity of 97% and specificity of 82.3 and diagnostic efficacy of 92.9%. Similar results were obtained by Ume Vital. Ume Ifat Siddiqui et al. in a study of 57 cases where sensitivity was 94.6, specificity 95, and diagnostic efficacy 94.7. In another study by Chandru Dev Sahu et al. of 60 cases, sensitivity was 90.3, specificity was 96.5, and diagnostic efficacy of 95%. The next study by Ravi et al. Of 100 cases had a sensitivity of 89.3, specificity of 93.8%, and diagnostic efficacy of 90.9%. In conclusion, high resolution ultrasonography and color doppler is useful modality for diagnostic evaluation of neck masses in any age group. It is simple, non invasive, and inexpensive diagnostic tool can be used as first line modality for evaluation for evaluating cervical soft tissue masses, especially in young and pediatric populations. CT ensures. Accurate anatomical localization, lesion characterization, in benign lesions, in malignant lesions, it is useful for staging and provides essential information about the tumor extent that directly affects the surgical approach necessary for curative resection. These are my references. Thank you.